guys welcome to mbbs made easy and our topic today is brown sackward syndrome so it is defined as damage to half side of the spinal cord so if this is our spinal cord brown sackward syndrome is basically defined as damage to one whole half side of the spinal cord this damage may be due to any tumor any trauma or any abscess before going into detail of brown sequet syndrome i like you to remember this rule rule for motor lesion if the lesion is before motor decussation you will see contralateral motor loss but if the lesion is after motor decussation you will see ipsilateral motor loss just like motor lesion rule for sensory lesion is if the lesion is before sensory decussation you will see ipsilateral sensory loss and if the lesion is after sensory decussation you will see contralateral sensory loss i am going to illustrate rule for motor lesion basically i am drawing corticospinal tract which is a motor tract from our cortex fibers go down decussate at medulla and then they go down and finally they go down into the spinal cord so rule number 1 states that if the lesion is before motor decussation means lesion anywhere from cerebral cortex up to the medulla you will see opposite side motor weakness and rule number 2 states that if the lesion is after motor decussation means anywhere from caudal end of medulla up to the spinal cord as in the case of the brown sequet syndrome in which the spinal cord half side is get destroyed you will see classical ipsilateral motor loss means same side motor weakness so now reach the text in the text uh, point number 1 it is written that ipsilateral motor weakness can be seen in brown sequet syndrome you know why i already illustrated illustrated to you point number 2 illustrate uh, said that upper motor neuron signs can be seen upper motor neurons are neurons which travel from cerebral cortex up to the spinal cord as in the brown sequet syndrome the spinal cord get destroyed that's why you will see upper motor neuron signs like increase the spasticity increase tone and increase deep tendon reflexes now i am going to explain rule for sensory lesion basically we have two types of sensory pathway the one is dorsal column pathway uh, i am drawing a spinal cord here dorsal column pathway go from spinal cord but it decussate at the level of brain stem and then they ascend upward but there is another pathway which is called as lateral spinothalamic tract it moves from spinal cord and decussate at the level of the spinal cord then moves upward now read point number 1 it illustrate that if the lesion is before sensory decussation means before sensory decussation you will see ipsilateral sensory loss this point number 1 is typical for dorsal column pathway in which the lesion is at the level of the spinal cord okay means lesion is before decussation cause decussation occur at this level at brain stem level so you will see ipsilateral loss of sensation of dorsal column pathway and what are the sensation of dorsal column pathway the sensation of dorsal column pathway is vibration and proprioception point number 2 states that if the lesion is after sensory decussation you will see contralateral loss see in lateral spinothalamic tract the lesion is at you can say at decussation or at the spinal cord and decussation also occurring here that's why you will see contralateral loss of pain and temperature read point number 3 it says just what i already told you that it's the lateral loss of vibration and position can be seen in brown sequet syndrome and contralateral loss of pain and temperature can be seen now the diagnosis can be made on the basis of x ray basically this is a first initial investigation mri is best investigation and biopsy to rule out tumor treatment is high dose dexamethasone as dexamethasone is anti inflammatory it will decrease the inflammation so that's all about brown sequet syndrome thank you so much